Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms, coming at y'all today with a video all about red dots. And we are looking at probably the best red dots for under $500 because there's definitely some expensive boys out there like uh, this one that you'll probably see in a couple of days. This is the Aimpoint T2 and uh, it's an awesome red dot but it is pricey, all right? Of course you get what you pay for, right, at the end of the day, but there are some budget-friendly or more budget-friendly options that are still high-quality optics, and we're here to shout those guys out. We're gonna start off with probably one of the most popular red dots that I, I have personally seen as far as custom builds, friends builds, things like that. Everybody's looking for the SIG Romeo 5. Why? Because it's affordable, it runs, it's, can it's got a warranty on it, a lifetime warranty on it, which is great, and it is just a fantastic little red dot. And it's got the shake to wake technology, they call the MoTeC technology. With other companies that we'll talk about here in just a moment actually, they have the same type of technology, but after it's like eight hours of it not moving, and then all of a sudden it's picked up, it turns on. Well, with the technology that they have in the SIG, the SIG optic here, the Romeo 5, it's a 2MOA red dot powered by the CR2032 battery, which is accessible from the side, so you actually don't have to dismount your optic to replace the battery, which is a nice feature, because if you had to do that, you'd probably have to like reside it, or in, hopefully it holds zero, you know, whenever you just get your right in the T markings or the correct Picatinny marking. Anyway, so what's neat about the MoTeC technology here is that it actually cuts off after about 120 seconds of being still. This will increase the battery life to this guy right around 40,000 hours, which is a lot if you think about it. And another really neat feature about that motion technology is the fact that you don't really have to worry about it, right? Let's say you do hear that ever so prevalent that we hear in today's age, bump in the night. Well, you don't have to worry about pushing buttons to turn on your optics, so that way you could actually see your optic or see your sights, right? If you have just flip-ups, good luck trying to see those in complete darkness unless you're, you know, running a Galil Ace with your, with your night sights. Good job, Alec. But uh, anyway, it's cool just to have that technology and open it up and see it. Two MOA red dot, very nice. And it is submergible for about one meter. And overall, just a nice, affordable optic. You've got a lens right up front here that still makes this guy easy to pick up during the day without showing too much reflection for anybody looking back out you at you. I have run this optic during very bright hours and I can still pick up the red dot even not on its highest setting. So I do appreciate that quite a bit. Windage and elevation adjustments you can just use with the caps here. You'll see you've got this little mark right up top. Use that to make your adjustments easy enough. And it does come with the high mount and low mount. So low mount, mounts like right down here. High mount is your exact co-witness, 1.41 inches. Very nice. All right, so the SIG Romeo 5 definitely is an option. Let's head on up to something a little bit more expensive. You'll probably see that we're gonna set this video up to go for the most affordable option, all the way up to like 499, right? So let's take a look. Next up for our top red dots under 500, we've got the Vortex Spark AR. I'm actually a pretty big fan of this red dot. I've been running this one for a little while on just different setups just to see how I like it. And it's a cool optic. I will say that it does have a 22 millimeter objective, which isn't exactly the largest, but it's not bad. You guys can kind of see the sight picture that you might have. So because it has this rubber outer coating, which is very nice actually, uh, but it does kind of take up a lot of your field of view right around here, but it's not that big of a deal, right? Especially since a lot of what you need to focus on is kind of here, out there, everywhere else, but it does just look like kind of like you're looking to a black abyss with a red dot. <laughs> but Overall, I like this optic. The battery is a AAA battery with about a 50,000 hour life, depending on which variation you have it set on, but at power six, you're looking at about 50,000 hours, which is pretty impressive. It's a good looking optic. The only other thing is, and on most red dots, you're gonna see the projector of the actual red dot reflecting onto the lens. This one, you can see it just a little bit more than what I can with others. Uh, I see a lot of you guys asking, you know, is that glue that I see in there? No, that's the actual projector for the red dot, so don't try to go in there and shave that down or anything because that ain't gonna work out for you, okay? Don't, just don't. But anyway, the Spark, the Spark AR, great little optic. It is a two MOA red dot, of course, and it does have Vortex's VIP warranty behind it. 
which is a fantastic warranty. You pretty much drop, break, crack, and if they can't fix it, they'll completely replace it for you at no cost to you other than shipping the product or the damaged optic back to them to evaluate it. So very easy process, which is super cool. I've had to use it before. I had a Vortex Viper red dot on my Glock break on me, and within two weeks, I had a new red dot on my gun mounted ready to go. So pretty sweet. But anyway, the Spark AR is definitely a cool option if that's what you're looking for. I do like how just kind of like, I like its look and style quite a bit. So overall, nice little option if that's what you are looking for. Also, we've got it set on this Diamondback, the DB15. We've got a video coming out very soon tomorrow, I think all about affordable AR builds. So if you're curious to check that out, stay tuned. That video will be coming out tomorrow. Anyway, Vortex makes fantastic optics all around for just about every budget. So if you're looking for something super high end, they got the $3,000 stuff. If you're looking something very affordable, they got their crossfire line, which is good too. But the Spark AR, you can't go wrong with. Now let's roll in to the next guy we got up, a little bit beefier guy. This is the Leupold Freedom RDS, or just simply put, red dot sight. This does take a 2032 battery, and the battery life on this one isn't all that great. It is coming in at about 1600 hours. If that's on the lowest level, on the medium level, it's about 1000 hours, and then for the highest brightness, you're only looking at about 300 hours. Granted, this one does have a little bit precise reticle. This is a one MOA dot compared to the others that are two MOA dots. So this one is a little bit more precise. If you're looking for something, I think ultimately this guy is just made to be rugged, durable, and work. If you guys remember, we gave away a M14 that I tried to, I tried to build up as similar to uh, Sergeant First Class's Randall Shookhart's uh, M14 that he used in Black Hawk Down, and we used the aim point on that one. I think Leupold's kind of going after aim point with their RDS series here. So something like that to get those precision shots off works pretty good. And I've got it mounted on the scar here, and this is what I've been running on it for a little while, and it works good. And it holds up to the scar, which is pretty impressive because the scar is not known to be nice to optics, all right? But anyway, pretty cool, pretty cool um, red dot. It does also have that automatic fall asleep uh, after about five minutes of motionless movement or no movement, I should say. It does turn off, which is good, and then immediately turns back on once you pick up your gun. Again, just something nice not to have to worry about, you know, for those... Uh, situations where you need a sight just to make sure your battery is fresh because like i said on the highest setting it is 300 hours now granted too you don't adjust this guy by using a two separate buttons for you know increasing intensity or lowering the intensity or a dial or anything like that this one you actually just have one button right here where the leupold logo is imagine that and if you just press the button it will increase the intensity or the brightness and then if you hold it and then once you get to the max intensity, which I will say this, that thing gets super bright. Having run this actually outside, I'm aiming it right here at the light and that red dot is super visible. Like it is blinding just how visible that guy is on its most bright setting. But once you get there to its brightest setting, it'll flash quite a bit. And then if you just hold the button down for about two seconds, you can start to turn it back down in the opposite direction. And then once you get to the lowest setting there, it also starts to flash. And it's still very easy to pick up even in a bright setting like this. So if it was completely dim, as I have turned the lights off before, it's actually still kind of bright. Like, not too bright, but right there teetering, uh, even in its dimmest setting for nighttime. So I think that's why it has such a short battery life. It is providing a lot of power to that reticle. So it's neat, don't get me wrong, it is very cool, uh, but is something that bright needed? Well, I'm gonna say yeah, depending on where you're at, Brighter is better. If I have the availability to turn it down, then send it, right? Also too, it does come with their own Picatinny mount, which is nice. Three torque screws, keeping that thing nice and locked in place. It is shock proof, you know, waterproof, all fog proofing. So you don't have to worry about ever really losing out on your red dot. And what's neat about this guy too, is I don't have anything getting in the way looking down the site as far as like a projector or anything like that goes. So some cons, it's a little bit bigger a little bit more expensive, uh, doesn't have quite the battery life, but this guy is rugged, it's built to run, and is one MOA, pretty sweet, all right? Again, 2032 battery, pretty nice. And next up, we've got the Holosun HS510C. This rugged little guy is pretty sweet, all right? I'm a fan of this guy, and I've got it set up on my 
beautiful little DS Arms SA58 here. And this one, one of the big features that I really like about this is you can actually select your reticle for it. You can have the simple two MOA red dot if you want, but if you want that red dot encased with the 65 MOA ring, you can have that as well. Reminds me quite a bit of why I like EOTEX and holographics so much. They're rugged, they're reliable, you can puncture your objective lens and it'll still be running without any issues. Granted, a red dot, you need that front lens, all right? If that thing cracks, it's not gonna run anymore. It is what it is. Again, a reason why I like holographics a lot because it's just a whole lot more rugged. But that's okay. This guy here is pretty much encased in this, what they call like multi-layer coating. You've got a this armor built around the red dot, which is pretty nice. And you guys can see it here, it is metal. Very cool. Again, that 2MOA, 2MOA red dot or 65MOA ring, you can select which either one you want. All of the red dots here too are night vision capable, except for the Spark AR, if that is something that you need. And that includes this guy as well. And the next one we'll be talking about here in just a moment. You do have about another 50,000 hours of battery life on this guy, which is pretty cool. That's uh, that setting six. That's pretty much where everybody likes to talk about it, I guess. But if you turn it up to you know great brightness, sure, it'll dim out over a period of time. But don't worry because you have what Hollow Sun calls their solar flare technology, which allows the red dot to stay on for a moment or for a, a longer period of time once that battery dies, if it does die. And I should say when it does die because I always forget to change out my batteries. And then I go to the range and realize I have to change it while I'm at the range. Carry extra batteries on your person. And when you do have to change out the battery, you don't have to remove the red dot. It is completely sealed. It's a waterproof optic. So it's right down here. You, you do have to use a torque screw to be able to get to the battery compartment open, but you know it's secure. It's also one of the few optics that we'll be talking about today that actually features a QD mount on it as well, exact co-witness. And if you wanna get a spacer in there to raise it a little bit, uh, bring it down to more of a lower one third type of co-witness, you can, which is cool. Um, all, all of that being said, it also does have that trademark by Hollow Sun Shake Awake technology. And this one here is a little bit different than everybody else because this one's actually user programmable. You can have it set up for just a few minutes or several hours. Once that red dot turns off and then you move the gun, it turns back on. We've already talked about it several times why I think that's such a cool feature. So the Hollow Sun HS510C has a lot to offer for the price. And I think it's a fantastic little red dot, especially with that 65 MOA ring. Why am I such a big fan of that ring? It's because in a CQB setting, like from here to the door that's about 20 feet away, you don't have to focus so much on a precise two MOA or even one MOA red dot. You have that larger outer ring that makes it easy to get that sight right on target. When you're at a closer engagement, it doesn't really matter how precise your red dot is, okay? Just throwing that out there. Now granted, if I wanted to go for something a little bit further out, i definitely use the RDS with the one MOA. With all that being said, the last optic I wanna talk about, unfortunately I don't have it here with me today, but it is the Aimpoint Pro. I have used a lot of Aimpoint's products and I gotta tell you all, the Pro is an awesome one for sure. Two MOA red dot, that guy's got more of about a 30,000 hour battery life on it. The con to this guy is the fact that it does take like not a proprietary battery, but something that's really difficult to get. It's a DL13N, so something that's not really all that commonly found, which kind of sucks, but it does run for a long time and you know you're getting a quality product with Aimpoint. Still a two MOA red dot. As you guys can tell, two MOA is pretty much that real popular red dot size. And for those of you that don't know, the larger your red dot, so you can go up to three, or I've seen on some RMRs out there, a 12 MOA red dot, you're not looking exactly at a precise sight picture with the larger reticle you have it's going to be covering up your target especially if it's a little bit further down range that means you might be you know aiming center mass you think and you, you actually have point of impact in the shoulder or completely missing you know so go for something a little bit more precise to close that group a little bit right but the aimpoint pro fantastic little optic for what it is and it does feature more of a torque type qd mount so you just twist that guy off you know tighten it down, loosen it up, whatever you need to get it off or tighten it or keep it on there. So, but anyway, like I said, Aimpoint makes phenomenal products. I'm a big fan of Aimpoint. Uh, just why are you guys using that, that weird battery? Cause you know, just you know, 2032 or, you know, AAA or something like that. That would just make everybody's life a lot easier. All right. So which of these red dots do you think is right for you? Which one is your favorite? Actually, 
even if it's not on this list, let me know. One thing I do like about red dots over, per se, holographics that I like to bring up quite a bit is the reticle clarity itself. So for instance, on holographics, it gets a lot more grainy. Hey, remember when I told you guys about batteries? My battery on this one's dead. Uh, so the reticles on those are a lot more grainy, but they do get super bright and they're much more rugged. What I like about red dots is the fact that they're a much more crisp reticle. So pros and cons, pros and cons, right? But anyway, I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments section below. below. Leave out holographics. We're not talking about those today. All right, we're talking about red dots. Which ones do you prefer and why? Let me know down in the comments section. Last item I wanna to talk to you guys about. Let me put this beautiful FAL right under here. You know, the true king of the battlefield, <laughs> Alec, Matt. I wanna talk about another king, the RPK that you see right here. I dropped that. The RPK that you see right here. <laughs> We're just gonna act like nothing happened there. Don't worry about it. It is the Malat Vepper chambered in 762 by 39. This guy is sweet and actually made in Russia. Why is that such a big deal? Because we can't get Russian made guns anymore. So pretty cool that we came across one of these guys. Well, technically two, but we'll talk about that other one later. Anyway, if you wanna see this guy get mag dumped with a 75 round drum that's also included in the giveaway, check out our video announcing this as our giveaway. And don't forget to enter the code word for those 400 entries if you haven't done so already. Malot, M-O-L-O. That's where you can get those 400 entries. Don't miss out, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com, and I'll see you guys down in the comment section.